Hall Superstar, 12 time Tag Team Champion of the World. This egotistical bastard is ready to shoot the shit as Sean Walsh presents The Sean Walsh Show. Where there are no holes barred. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Halloween and birthday special edition of the Sean Wall Show. As some of you may know, today is my birthday, so happy birthday to me. Um, also, a happy Halloween to all the Sean Wall Show viewers out there. But... Just because it's the holiday doesn't mean that there will not be a Sean Walls show, at least not this holiday. Today we have on the reigning and soon to be defending COH heavyweight champion of the world, Scott Adams on the show. We got one hell of an interview Lots of stuff that I talk with Scott about. We talk about his feud with Daniel Mars. We talk about the accurate enterprise. We talk about him finally becoming the COH World Heavyweight Champion. We talk about all the good that's been talked about. We talk about all the bad. We talk about all of that right here on the Sean Walls Show. So you can look forward to that. Also, you can look forward to next week's episode which will have special guest Levi McIntyre or Matt Barnes, whatever you want to call him. Now, Levi has been on the Sean Wall Show before on a special episode with Rat Metal. However, this time's a little bit different. It's not going to be just based on the Rat Metal tag team. It's going to be some Rat Metal, um, some... Levi McIntyre from over YWF. It's going to be talking about some of the stuff that's been going on lately. Maybe getting a little bit of an explanation. Maybe the other side of the story. Something like that. So we can all look forward to that. Send your questions. Ask FM slash Sean Walsh 105 to send in your questions for Levi. Make sure to put something in there so I know it's for Levi. Put to Levi, to Matt Barnes, hashtag ask Levi, something like that. It doesn't really matter to me, just do that, make it easy, make my job easier. And don't wait to send in questions, send them in as soon as you can, once it hits, hits your head and you know what you want to ask, send it. Now, Let's talk about some things on this channel. Uh, Call All Search presents Monster Mash. was originally intended to be out uh, today. However, as you could probably take a good guess, that is not going to be happening. Everything is recorded for Monster Mash. Uh, it just needs to be edited and commentated. And hopefully that can be done within the next couple of days. So, Monster Mash is going to be on a little bit of a delay, just a little, and should be out within this first week of November. So, look forward to that. Some awesome matches. We're going to see AJ Styles take on J-Crack. That's an interesting match. We're also going to see Kamikaze in action against Spider-Man. Yes, you heard me correctly. Spider-Man stepping back in the ring to take on Kamikaze. It's going to be real interesting. We got so much more. We got the Punisher Fisk versus Casey Gordon and what is going to be an epic match. You're all going to love that match. Main event of the night. It's going to be awesome. Now, 
some of you know this from a couple weeks ago when I addressed it on the AWF page. And I didn't address it in the last couple weeks because there was so much content to talk about that I didn't really have the time. And I didn't feel like giving you guys another huge thing in my intro here. I'm trying to keep this one short today. And that is that the AWF will be moving from 2K14 to WWE2K16 a little bit earlier than expected. I have been having complications with my PlayStation 3 and its 2K14 disc. Every other game works, but when I use 2K14 on the PlayStation, if I'm doing something like I'm recording a match, I'm doing Story Designer, I'm trying to create an entrance, something like that, the system will just shut off on its own. It doesn't do that for any other game. It just does that for the play for excuse me 2K14, and I've been getting by with that in the last couple months. It took a lot of recording and a lot of headaches and a lot of restarts, but I've been barely getting by with that throughout the call All Star season, throughout um, what was left the AWF season, and originally I was planning on having King of the Ring out by now. I started to record, and of course, it kept restarting and everything. And last week, it just kept doing it, and I made the decision that I can't record King of the Ring because I would do a match and it would get close to the end, and boom, restart. It was just awful. I needed to. I needed to move. The game is just a broken game. So. Last Thursday, well, this past Thursday, I should say, purchased myself brand new PlayStation 4 and a copy of WB2K16. By the way, if you want to add me on PSN, the AWF105, just like the YouTube channel. So give me an ad, the AWF105, like I just said, PlayStation Network, PS4. And this goes even to people who've had me add it on the PlayStation 3 because this is a brand new PSN account. So, add me. You know, may, maybe make it easier. Send me a message. Let me know who you are. I may not know exactly who you are. You know, I may see the user BunnyLover035 and not know who that is, but in reality, that's Adam Jackpot. That's that's not his real PSN, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it was. So, you know, let me know, and I'm, I'll add you guys. Maybe someday we'll play 2K online, or if you're in AWF or doing stuff with Call Stars, it'd be nice to have you add it, so... I can search for your cause when we need to use them and such. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to, left to cover. I think that's just about everything. So, yeah. About to head on to the interview with Scott. Don't forget next week is Levi McIntyre, Matt Barnes. Send in your questions. Also, look forward to AWS return from his hiatus. It wasn't meant to be a hiatus, but it ended up being a hiatus because of the long work it took to put out Call Stars, and now it's a new system. So it's coming. I'm in the process of getting people created. If you're in AWF, please, if you have a copy of 2K16, send me your call. Upload him to Community Creations if you have a PlayStation 4. And then let me know. If you do not have a PlayStation 4, such as if you have an Xbox One, if you have one of the last-gen consoles, or you have yet to get the game, maybe you're still on 2K14, again, let me know, and then we can work something out with a formula or something so we can get your call created. All right, let's go send it to the COH World Heavyweight Champion, Scott Adams. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sean Wall Show 
and today I am joined by the reigning and defending COH World Heavyweight Champion, Scott Adams. What's up, Scott? What up? I'm not sure about defending. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit... Well, you I'm know... I'm picky about that part. You know, the live events are trying to get you to defend the belt, but, you know... What? There's no one worthy. <sighs> Apart from you, obviously, but... Oh, I know, yeah. To be honest, it wouldn't be defending. It'd be more like sharing the belt. You know, I hand it to you, you hand it back, I hand it back to you. Exactly. I uh, I, I don't Jay, know why. Jay cleans it every now and then. Jay's usually good with the belts. Um, but yeah. So, you're the... Oh, Spellborn likes things differently. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Scott Adams, the new world champion... And that's uh, going to be an interesting conversation, with, especially with some of the things that some people have been saying on Ash, but we'll get to that later, which I'm sure, Scott, ha- you have seen and have a few things to say about that. Um, but before there was World Heavyweight Champion Scott Adams, there was a very young Scott Adams who, even before COH, pretty sure you saw YTCW, am I correct here? Uh, yeah, I started out on um, YTCW. Actually, the, how it all started, the uh, guy actually approached me. His name's David. We don't really talk about him that much. Yeah, he's not very well liked. Um, yeah, he approached me and he says, Hey, do you want to like help me start up this score fed and all that? Um, basically, uh, YTCW stands for YouTube Championship Wrestling. And it was supposed to be everybody in the... Um, wrestling community on YouTube joining his core fed. Um, that's how it started, but everything just didn't go to plan. No, no. But, and you started off, with, like you said, with the show. You, you weren't a, a character. You were more like behind the scenes. Um, I was a character at the start. Um, I, I, I did have like a tag team run uh, with David. We, we did, Oh, really? Um... I think I was tag team champions at one point, but all the videos got deleted because uh, he started like obviously recording with uh, not a capture card, uh, card. It was all like camera, and I suggested to him get capture card, do this, do that, and old videos got deleted to make, uh, and then it started with the new ones. And yeah, I think I was tag team champions, <laughs> and then it all came from, hey, why don't we have you as a on-screen owner, uh, on-screen general manager, on-screen this, and on... Uh, it was... I think I have the track record for the most fired from that fed. <laughs> uh, lots, lots of getting fired. Um, what kind of things did you do with YTCW uh, besides like what your on-screen character did? Because I, I know you, you like you said you you helped out with it and you did some of the things I'm guessing kind of like what you do now with COH maybe a little bit more. Um, I started creating all the logos. Um, obviously uh, we had YTCW Rage, um, we had YTCW Livewire and Burnout. Um, obviously YTCW Livewire that was my show. And then obviously I got pissed off with David so much that because he always interfered with your show. It's like, you know, your show is your show. You're doing all the recording for it. You're doing the uploads for it and the editing. You expect it to be, you know, your show. But he was like, oh, I don't like who you're booking. I don't like why you're pushing that guy. Um, I mean, guys that you have you see in COH like um, Morris, for example. I was pushing him. Now, uh, it went until... And then when I was pushing him and he liked Morris, he would take him from my show and then put it on his. Mm. It was like, it was like, okay, so you're drafting people without my permission? And it, it turned out that my show was pretty much... Here, this is the, the guys that have filled up my inbox. You can have them because I don't want them. And then when they start looking good... I'll have them. So it, it was like back then it was pretty much NXT, you know, but it was like after one show, it was like, oh, I actually like him. Yeah, I'm having him. 
Let's see, let's see. So, I mean, it, the idea of it, what you guys did with YTCW, because I've always liked this idea of having one guy do one show, another guy do another, and it's under the same umbrella, but like you said, like it, it's basically your show. And it's a cool thing, but clearly, like, David, the way he did it is, like you said, with Morris, oh, well, if that guy's good, well, I want him, so then he uses it as a developmental, essentially, which is not what you signed up to do. Well, no, yeah, I mean, I, I signed up to basically help out and do stuff, but it, it, it just become like... Obviously, I, I, I made my own show, VCW, uh, back then. Um, obviously, I stopped doing it for... I think my computer stopped working, and then obviously I was doing other stuff, because uh, I think I was um, travelling to college and all that, so I just didn't have time at the top when I was doing that. Um, but then I ended up joining back with them, and... Uh, I was just basically doing odd promos now and then. I think we had like an NWO angle, which I didn't. Re- I I kind of enjoyed at one point, but then I just it was just me versus David all the time, and it was like one minute I was like involved in a storyline, and then I was removed from it, and then I was brought back in a different storyline, and then removed from it, and it was just constant ridiculousness. So I don't know. I think. That was from, I think, 2008 up to 2010, and then I just stopped. I, I kind of cut core out and um, took a hiatus for a while. And then, obviously, uh, I came back into your age. All right. Um, now, let's let's talk about that. You, you came. What year was it that um, you came into COH? Was it, was it 2012, or...? Um, yeah, I think it was 2012. Because you yeah. came in around the same time, like, like the OBN angle was happening, right? Um, just at the end of it, I think it was. Um, I know it was when Battleground first started getting posted. Mm-hmm. So. That was the, <clears throat> that was the uh, same year uh, the OBN joined, was when Battleground first joined. Okay. We, Battle, like, we joined, like, like five or six episodes in, because we, we debuted at Outbreak. Right. So I think... Scott had a match on Outbreak, so I think he was before us. Okay. Now, you came in, and I know you're very well known for that few with Daniel Mars, but, like, I and I, and I don't know because I don't, I don't remember, and I wasn't really watching much then, but, like, how did, uh, what, what did you have to start out with? Did you even have a program to start off with? Or was it like with just any other new guy? You just came in and you had matches. Um, I think I was lucky to be honest because I came in on the same time. I literally come in on uh, episode two of um, Battleground, um, and lucky enough, Daniel Mars was there. And I think just it was like pretty much rookie battle kind of thing, and then. I, there was no plan after that, but because obviously with my gimmick, um, uh, well, the original plan was to bring me into the um, <clears throat> the Anchor Enterprise. That was my original plan. Before anything with Daniel Mars, it was just, hey, we're gonna tag you up with these guys, and that was it. Um, I was supposed to be the bodyguard, but obviously with how it planned out, it just seemed like I was doing my own thing, even though. I was supposed to be part of the Acre Enterprise, so it it kind of worked both ways. Um, I got like the the credibility of being in the group, mm-hmm. but at the at the same time, I was able to build my character up from you know obviously two years ago to where I am now on my own with not really any help from my tag team partners. But you but you knew from the beginning that you would be joining the Acre Enterprise. Yeah. I knew from the beginning. Oh, that's that's interesting. Because I know that it was the same situation went with um with Fisk. He he came in and he knew before he even debuted that was the 
the plan before this whole undefeated streak. So it's interesting that they had the plan. Do you do you know if that was something that that Travis did, or did Steve and Alex pick you? Maybe just from YTCW, or um, I think it was all of us, to be honest. Um, obviously. Steve and Alex, um, I was talking to him at the time. I was saying, hey, you know, I'm thinking about joining COH. You know, what's it like? Um, and they says, yeah, it's cool. And I says, you know, I, I haven't even watched an episode. And uh, I was just saying, what's it like? Finding out, doing my research. Um, and I was, said to Travis, I says, hey, you know, can I join COH? And uh, then it, it was all, like, suggested from all of us that I joined them. I mean, right. <laughs> I mean, how uh, I, I didn't even know COH existed. Um, cause obviously, I won't I won't go over it. But obviously, Travis with his story of the falling out with right. everybody, which you can hear from his podcast. Mm-hmm. Love there. <laughs> yeah. So, but that's pretty cool. From the beginning, you knew you you were going to be with these guys and. You know, the Accurate Enterprise, everyone knows, clearly because it's in the name, M Accuracy, the Alex Enterprise, but, you know, Scott Adams really brought a different element to the, and I know, like you said, he, you were meant to be like the enforcer of the, of the group. And, I mean, you know, at times, you, you did do that, but also, it wasn't just like you were an enforcer. I mean, it actually felt like you were an honest, like, just member. You weren't just the muscle of the group. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. It, 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 we all, all three of us, you know, um, like we said, posted the other day um, on the Facebook page. You know, we've all been world champions now. Obviously, I'm the current one. Um, but we have all have our own uh, purpose. It's like... When we had the uh, seven deadly sins kind of thing, you know, you could see it in that sense. You know, we're all one deadly sin in the group, uh, and it's not like one's better than each other. I mean, even though you know everybody knows that one of us is better. Right. Not saying who, because then it will start arguments. (laughs) Ah, me. (laughs) (laughs) Well, right now you're the world champ, so. And one of the, and the other one's gone. <laughs> yeah. I know. Why is it with people retiring? Stop it. To everyone. You know, every, it's that, the new trend. That new re- that retirement home is booked, man. They must have got some like special for lunch Copeland or something and, like Copeland that. Copeland and Zane are arguing over pudding and shit. It's crazy. But th- that that was a this pretty cool thing, and l- like you said, all of you guys are now. World champions, the original three Accurate Enterprise members, and and I'm hoping that, and I would figure that be so. That was kind of the idea from the beginning of what it would create, because clearly, you know, when the group started, M Accuracy was the star, and and Alex really grew from the Accurate Enterprise to what he became up into retirement, and then. You came along along the way, and now you're, you're a world champion. Maybe maybe Fisk gets that someday. We'll see. Everybody's saying Fisk. Maybe, you know, yeah. What about what about Carol? You know, he could come back and shock everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whatever you say. Who are you to doubt El Dandy? El Dandy. But that's all. That's all uh, possibilities. Now, one thing I always liked about the Acura Enterprise and you in there is that. It wasn't just, all right, M accuracy is feuding, say, with the Goonie. All right, everyone is fighting Goonie. It's not the case. You had your own storylines while a part of the Accurate Enterprise, which I thought was, was awesome. One of those being with Daniel Mars. And I'm talking about the, the first time you guys feuded. So this would have been, I guess, the build into you joining the Accurate Enterprise? Yeah, I mean, you could say it in the sense of I had to prove myself to join the Accurate Enterprise. And, I mean, the concept of me and Daniel Mars, um, I mean, I feel like it sh- um, it was going to end at the um, 
Best of Three series, the first one. Mm-hmm. But because I pushed at it so much, and I think we both... I mean, I didn't like how Travis booked some stuff. I mean, uh, what was it? I won the Best of Three series, and then I I pretty much got mixed up with the shuffle, and then all of a sudden, Daniel Mars is internet champion. I was like, what the fuck? Are you being serious right now? I, 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 I've just won a Best of Three series, and... Daniel Mars is now the internet champion. What, how does that work? Is it called like, you know, um, lose a shitload of matches to become champion? Yeah. It makes no sense. And Daniel Bryan I, did it. And that's where I think, you know, obviously me rattling on the fan page and it just got, it built on the feud and I mean, Daniel, or David, who plays the character, um, you know, we both mixed, and it worked out. Yeah, it worked out with you guys. You guys, you know, some you guys just had a, a very good chemistry with each other. Now, I got to ask this. Before we get into any more of this, the, the feud with Daniel Mars, the accent. How? What did you... I mean, it was a bad accent, but what did you think, especially... You know, did you did you find that like offensive or the way he, like the way he did it or the fact that he did do it or? Um, I didn't find it offensive. Um, I just felt that it was very silly and put on, and it was incorrect. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously, me talking to you right now, I'm not being all. As you guys would say, you know, London. Right. You know, I'm not. I've not got a London accent. You know, I'm not talking posh. I'm just talking normally, and that's where I don't think he got that. He was, you know, it was all like it felt like an episode of Family Guy where they was taking the piss out of British people, and you know, they do all like the I I from London, you know, and it's like oh, I couldn't I couldn't stick it. And I think I switched off on a few promos. I compared uh, on Ask FM. I compared Daniel Mars's British accent to uh, how the little vultures that sounded like the Beatles in the Jungle Book, the old Disney cartoon. It sounded like all bunch of Ringo stars and shit. Yeah, that, it, it, it is. It was Why pretty so much like Lumboy. Ringo Star. Yeah, it was so bad. And the thing is, not not that is. A knock on, well, kind of is, but uh, I could, as as good as your, you guys is were were together, I just could not take him seriously with that accent for the longest oh, time. Oh shit! Oh shit! What? Daniel Morris is British in PCW. Yeah, well, yeah, he is. <laughs> and it's, oh, he hasn't done he hasn't done a promo yet. But. Thank God. Um, that's, I'm kidding. Um, but what? What what do you th- think about working with with David? Because you you've worked with him a lot. I think the only person that's worked with David more than you may be Jay. I mean, you might have even worked more with David than than Jay. Like, what what is it like working with uh, David Benz? Uh, some people have different opinions on that. I don't mind working with Daniel, but obviously he has his goals. Um, I'm not saying I don't agree with his goals um, some I really disagree um, I mean one time he inboxed me and he said and this is when we for the draft show and we had that match on the draft show he was like um, he messaged me and saying you know put the um, money in the bank briefcase on the line um, how about you know I win and you lose the briefcase seeing as you're going over the slam you know huh. You, you're going to get, you know, there's no world champion on that. Because at the time, he, did, he didn't know uh, who was getting drafted to show, even though I did. Yeah. And Because uh, I did the pictures. Um, <laughs> he was like, oh, you know, you, you'll easily get a title shot on, you know, Slam. Because um, obviously, there will be no champion. And on Battleground, you know, it will make him seem legitimate going into, which is now the eradication. 
And I was just like, at first, he basically, was, he basically said, "Hey, congratulations on winning Money in the Bank." Uh, can I have it? it to me? <laughs> yeah, and, and that's, I mean, I read it a few times, and I was like, "Yeah, I kind of like the idea, but this is just benefiting you. It's not really benefiting me." <laughs> it doesn't benefit you at all. And you know, to be fair, if if the plan, if the idea was, all right, we need Daniel Mars with the briefcase, he was in that match. Then he would have won. Why would why would you lose it the the next night? Because it was the draft show, so it was the, right after Ultimate Glory to him. And then you just go on the slam and you just continue on. And he's like, "Oh, you, you'll get a shot." I mean, if I was guaranteed a title shot on Slam, then yeah. But I know I wasn't. Yeah. I I. Th- I'm glad that didn't happen, though. I mean, clearly now because you won, but you you should ha- you should have won. You should have kept the briefcase. I d- Mars winning the briefcase it would have been too early for him, but that's just my opinion on that. Speaking of Mars, you, when you guys did the whole um, the second feud, no, mm. that that feud was. It better, and it meant more because it was the second time, and this time it was for the internet championship. Now, yeah, um, I mean that feud um, for the internet championship, it it made a lot of sense. Um, obviously, he was make, um, you know, it it made the feud go well because um, he was making me sound like I wasn't worth. Having a title shot, um, yet yeah, you beat him in the best of. <laughs> um, and the fact that he said that I went on to fight the OBN while you was joining the Acre Enterprise, and he, he made it like sound like um, when I came in, it was like, "What do you want more? Do you want to join the Acre Enterprise or do you want to go for a title shot?" And I I had to try and make the feud sound like. Uh, I was already part of the Acre Enterprise before I even debuted. Yeah. You know. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Now, one th- what, what what show was it on that you guys had your, um, I think it was like an, what, an Iron Man match, or, yeah, it was an Iron Man match. Uh, that was, um. Was it Guerrilla Warfare? Yeah, I think it was Guerrilla Warfare. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. Um, no, you, you were already internet champion. Was this? Well, yeah, he, he, was, he was the. I think he was, Scott was defending the belt. I think because this was the blow was off match. War? I think. Was it Guerrilla Warfare? I'm pretty sure this is Guerrilla Warfare. I I'm, thought I, it was the one before that. Well, the one before that would have been People Power, and then it would have been Ready to Rumble. So it had to be Guerrilla Warfare. Wait, wait, Ready to Rumble. Yeah. Um, but, so it had to be Guerrilla Warfare, and I remember this match, because I remember it being so funny, uh, because you can, <laughs> you would beat him, and then you would hit him with, like, the steel steps, get yourself disqualified, oh, gotta rack up a few more wins. No, that was at People Power. <laughs> yeah, I think that was People Power, yeah. That was People Power, that was yeah. People Power? You fought Mutatron yeah. in Guerrilla Warfare. Yeah, that's it. Oh, um, so yeah. Cool. I don't remember it. Yeah, yeah, it was People Power, because, um, we had the voting polls. And I wanted it to be a Hell in a Cell match. He wanted an Iron Man match. And everybody just voted Iron Man match. And I was like, Travis hated everyone. <laughs> right? He literally messaged me and said, that is the last time I'm doing an Iron Man <laughs> match. Because no. it was ridiculous. <laughs> no, honestly, I thought it was going to be the third option. Because the third option was, I think it was both it was both stipulations. And Rudo was going to be the guest referee. Oh, dear God. <laughs> that would have been crazier. Yeah, that's it. No, it, it was special guest referee Rudo, um, an Iron Man match, a still um, a Hell in a Cell match, and I, I don't know if there was any more, but it was the Iron Man Hell in a Cell match with Rudo as the ref. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh man, it's like Russo, fucking a. It was just like what the fuck. Um, but yeah, I, I I enjoyed that match. It was like it was it just made me laugh so much because it was like. Okay, I'm winning like five, six, or 
no, what is it? I'm winning five, and he's only got two. I'll hit him with the steel steps like a few times, and that'll rack up his score. It was just, it was a brutal match. I, I enjoyed it, but yeah, Travis says he would never do an Iron Man match again because it just took so long. <laughs> Iron Man matches, they, they, I definitely see where he's coming because I've recorded some. They can be annoying, but the way he did it. I don't know if that was just because he was like, oh, I'm, forget it. I'm doing it like this. Oh, it was just so so funny how that match went. And you used the steel steps. And speaking of the steel steps, where what is the origin of the steel steps and this being your gimmick? Right. Um, there was a... I think it was Barney Green. I think it was the match where I had with Barney Green, and I watched that match, and I think it was the first time I powerbombed somebody on the steel steps, and I was like, Travis, that is a gimmick. I messaged him on Facebook, and I said, I think we need to steel steps, powerbomb everybody on the steel steps. I think that is the gimmick now. And Travis was like, yeah, I think we should do it. (laughs) (laughs) But... With every gimmick, there is always one troll, and um, his name is Levi. Oh, God. Who starts saying shit like, oh, yeah, um, you make love to the still steps, and blah, 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 and that just ruined the whole gimmick, and now I hate this still steps gimmick. I used to love it, and now I hate it. You just hate because, it now. Yeah, because everybody could caught on to what. Levi said, and everybody says it now. Mm. How even my even my Ask FM trolls say it now. See, I get, th- I like the steel, the steel steps too, though, because kind of like Triple H has, has his sledgehammer, and you got the steel steps. I mean, I would love to just change it to the baseball bat. Cause, I mean, just seeing like me coming out with Sting entrance with baseball bat. That was one of the things I wanted Travis to do. When, mm-hmm. If he ever upgraded to uh, uh, 2K15, but he didn't. Well, I think it's in 16. Yeah, it is in 16. Yeah. You never know. So, so maybe uh, Scott Adams trades in the steps for a baseball bat, you know, a little bit lighter. Yeah, a little bit lighter. <laughs> Still a baseball bat. <laughs> Painted in black. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, but all those all those um power rounds and the steel steps. Now, Daniel Mars he made a stipulation that that was going to be it, right? Because he because he was saying like this would be, if, I think it was like if he lost or di- or no matter what that was going to be the last match for you guys. And then he took like a hiatus. Yeah, um, his hiatus was basically and. This is the God's honest truth. Um, I don't know. Daniel could say something different, but this is from Travis himself. Um, Travis f- totally didn't know that um, there was no more... Um, that was the it. It went until I reminded Travis that... Um, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, there was a stipulation that he can't... He doesn't want to fight me again or have a rematch for the belt. And uh, Travis was like, really? It's like, oh shit, I, 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 I was booking matches for you to carry on the feud. It's like, well, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Travis had nothing for him at the time. Yeah, because I remember that happening. It, it was so weird because you guys could have taken the feud longer. And it, clearly that's what Travis was thinking. Like he had it booked and you guys could have taken that thing at least to the next CPV, and then he puts that on there. Why? I don't know. I mean, to be honest, uh, half of my feuds, pretty much it was just me railing railing up people on um, Facebook. It was just like me trash-talking to anybody. Still do it now, but not not as much. Um, Shine your prize now. (laughs) But... um, I think one of the ma- main feuds that I think l- made my uh, internet championship legitimate um, 
was Mutatron. And that was me... I don't know why, it used to wind me up. Um, when he used to... Every promo he would do, he would bring up the fact that he was the owner of MWE. Mm-hmm. And it pissed me off. <laughs> it's like, it's like, how many times do you need to plug your own core show? It's like, <laughs> hey, it, it, it might as well have just said, hey, um, I'm not getting many views, so uh, come check out MWE because I need views. I mean, I, I love Mutron. He's, he's, he's a cool guy. Um, but yeah, it just really annoyed me. And uh, yeah, it just turned into a feud. And I remember the stipulation was, if I win, he cannot say MWE in any promo ever. So if he does say it, you know, there's some dealing shit to do. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I I think it was because of me. Um, he ch- he actually changed his because um, MWE used to, used to stand for Mutatron wrestling entertainment yeah and because i'm i don't know i i was like why would you have a core fed named after yourself that's like saying you know swa should have been sean's wrestling alliance oh dear you know or obviously you know obviously swa was um steve so Mm -hmm. you know is it Steve Wrestling Alliance, and I and I I drilled it into him to the point that he actually changed the name to Mega um, Wrestling Entertainment. Yeah, I, I I'm with you. Like I don't like when people put their names in. It. Like it's like when Reggie started TCF, it was Tiller Call Federation. Like what? Who if who puts their name in the show? Like just plug in yourself. Oh, it's just. So bad, and why Mutatron needed to to bring that up all the time? I, I can see how that would be annoying. I think that I think I got to say Mutatron was one of my favorite feuds. Um, yeah, it, behind it, Daniel Mars, it it was a cool feud, and like you were saying, like after the, like that little in between period of like after Daniel Mars, it seemed like all right, well. Scott saw uh, defend the title against random lower card guy, and you'd beat them no problem. And so, I mean, I guess it it worked because you were beating all these people. But it was almost like for the longest time there was no one at your level. Like you were yeah. you were at the top, and everyone was below you and didn't stand a chance. There was like the mid card division was very weak for a while. Until a couple people from Slam came over. Yeah, I mean it was it was pretty weak because the guys who I was having it was Mitch, and Mitch just had terrible mic issues. Um, so his promos was very awful. I mean, yeah, you had to, if you was watching on a, um, on your mobile or um, watching on a laptop, you would have to pretty much plug it into some sort of um, speakers and turn it up, crank it up just for his promo because you couldn't hear it. Um, and yeah, I didn't really like feuding with Mitch just because of that. I, um, how I put across to um, I think Travis, I said, you know, I want to drop the belt to someone who actually does promos so that I can make this, you know, feud good. I mean. Me and Daniel was doing promos, and that's what made it good because you know we was chucking back at each other promo after promo, trash talking on Facebook, and um, with them it was just trash talking on Facebook, and it just seemed like I was carrying the feud a little bit. Um, but and that's where obviously I suggested the idea to um, Travis: Hey, this is the person I want to drop the belt to. Uh, yes, and then, and clearly, you went on to uh, to feud with Nitro. But before we get into that, let, let's talk about because we'll we'll pick up with uh, Nitro and and what happens afterwards. But let's talk about uh, VCW because yep. and you know you you said earlier how you had it in the beginning, but then you. You stopped doing it with because of computer issues. And you went back to YTCW. Uh, I want to say was 
was it last year that you brought you brought uh, VCW back again? Um, I think it was either last year or the year. Yeah, it was last year. I brought VCW back last year. Um, and yeah, I I, I enjoyed doing it. Um. It was, it was it was really really cool. I mean, you you definitely had the um the right equipment. Like it looked very good, and clearly you brought over um the lows like that you were already making for like COH, and it it looked really good. There was a lot of um a lot of names over there, and it, it looked very promising. Hmm. But obviously, um, it ended. Uh and that was mainly because uh, I fell into a bit of depression, um, and I just I just couldn't. I, sometimes I just didn't even want to turn my PlayStation on. Mm-hmm. Um, the catch card I had, um, it's a component cable catch card. I love the catch card because um, one of the things, the features that it has with it is the fact that I don't need to plug it into my laptop or my computer. You know, just stick an external hard drive or a USB stick into the capture card and then, you know, play it off your PlayStation. I, I even have a remote for it, so I can I don't have to, like, reach over and press it. I just press the remote to record. And I think one of the things I hated about it was the... Because um, I started using HDMI and um, having to switch over from component to HDMI every time I was playing on my PlayStation because I, I would have it on component just for recording and then if I was playing like a different game I would switch over to HDMI and it just got to the point that I was like I really can't be bothered to change it over um, and then I was having the pratting about with um, Levi because um, Levi decided that he didn't really want to do his um, show anymore on his own so we, we did a merge, and that I think the merge fucked us over. Yeah, I remember that. Cause just to to give a little back history here for for people who aren't aware, Levi had his own show. And what, what I think isn't it under the the same name that he's doing now, or uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you you see Levi now, you see how great he is at putting out shows, and um. He didn't want to do it anymore, and he merged with VCW, and so you guys merged rosters and everything, and I'm sure you're going to get into right now on how much of a mess that was. Not on your end, well, but on his end. Well, yeah, I mean, the idea, he, he was like, he wanted to do it, but he didn't want to, he didn't have, like, a direction for his fares, and... The idea of merging came across, and uh, the idea was for him and Austin to um, do commentary. Because mm-hmm. he, he didn't really want to do recording, I f- so it was just like, you know, I record for one show, and he does the commentary. Um, or was it he does recording, and I do the... It was mainly me doing the editing. That was pretty much down there. I, I think he wanted to do some recording. Um, so, I mean, I prattled about with, like, um, trying to clone my PlayStation so he could have all the belts and um, all the creative superstars and all that uh, on his console, you know, because there was, like, for PS3s, you can pretty much hack the piece, up, hack it to pieces and um, have it all transfer across. So I did all that, and yeah, it just, um, there's miscommunication, um, Austin was like, oh no, I don't want to do commentary, and I was like, because Austin didn't want to do it, Levi didn't want to do it, and I was like, oh, so what am I going to do now? Because um, at the time, it was, because I had two shows, I had uh, Livewire and um, Overdrive, is it Overdrive? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that's, it's been so long that I don't even know my own shows. Um, <laughs> We're driving and, I had, and I had um, Morris do um, Livewire and I had Kevin do Overdrive on commentary. 
and then ob- obviously with the um, Levi and Austin coming in, I thought, well, they're going to do one show, and I might as well team Kevin and uh, Morris on the other show. And yeah, it was just totally balls everything up. I mean, the last um, episode that I was going to sh- um, put up, I've actually ha- have it still recorded on my PC. Um, just haven't edited it together. I just. Yeah, I lost motivation after then, and I was like, I really don't want to do this anymore. But I do want to do the core show still. I, I still, I mean, today, today, I still want to do it. I still really? want to bring back VCW. Um, the plan was because uh, obviously I said um, I want to bring back um, VCW after Core All Stars, the last one, mm-hmm. not the recent one, but the one before that, and. Um, it obviously it didn't happen, but um, that was mainly because of 2K15. The idea was I was going to do away with my PlayStation 3 because I just bought back PlayStation 4, uh, bought 2K15, and I, it was a big disappointment. Yes. It's like, it was like, how are you supposed to do a core show on 2K15? I was like, there's no crate arena option. There's no crate belt option. I mean, that's half of my, you know... It, it was pretty much felt like, oh my god, I'm going back in time to back SmackDown vs. Raw 2008, where every show looked like fucking Raw and SmackDown. <laughs> it was a, it was really really bad, but now you talk about how you, you think about you think about bringing VCW back. I mean, is that just you kind of just saying like, oh, what if, or is that like a legitimate possibility that VCW could make a comeback? It's a legitimate possibility that it could come back. Obviously, um, I need to talk to certain people. Um, not not people who are in the Fed. It's more um, the commentary team. I need to talk to uh, Morris. I need to talk to Kevin. If they still want to be on board, mm-hmm. um, if they don't, then obviously I'm gonna have to, you know, find new commentary team. Um, but yeah, it's ba- it's most of it is if I can't get commentary team, it might not come back because I'm not doing commentary <laughs> on my own. I, I do enough as it is, um, and plus I'm not very great at commentary. You will see past episode of VCW, and I wasn't that great. Hell, I, I think I listened to like one of the original VCWs to compare um, my commentary from like years and years ago to ha- when I brought it back um, last year, and I was like, oh my god, my commentary back then and then it was like to- two totally different commentary. Uh, if you did bring it back, would you want to work with uh, like? I'm not talking about even from a from a character standpoint, but just from working with them, working on the show with uh, Levi and Austin again. Uh, definitely. Um, obviously, I, I want to work with anyone. Um, um, and I'm I'm a bit like Travis, you know. I, I'm I'm open to listen to everybody, you know. But I guess my booking compared to Travis's booking is. If you don't put any effort in, then you're not going to get booked. Mm-hmm. It's more of a... I would look on the Facebook page. I would look at people's uh, promos. Promos will always get used by me. You know, if you put a promo out and... I, I shouldn't really say this on on, the, on your podcast because obviously people are listening now and they're going to go, oh, so that's how you get a world title shot in, the deal, <laughs> in VCW. And I'm like, basically... To get a world title shot at VCW was pretty much just tell you what a world title shot. It was like, you know, put a challenge out, you know, <laughs> just make it interesting. But, you know, people was like lack of interest, I think, from certain people. And it was like, OK, I'm going to have to just pretty much make it up as I go along. Half of my my um, booking was universe mode. I, I, I actually... I'm one of the people who actually did like universe mode because the randomness of some matches was just hilarious. Um, I was, when I was recorded, I mean, I had one recording and I did it twice. I recorded it twice and 
the outcome came out the same way, and I thought, fuck this, it's going to go in the show, and uh, it was, um, um, what you call it? I forgot the name. The Hogard Dynasty, that's it. Mm-hmm. In universe mode, for some reason, the Hog Eye Dynasty just didn't want to be a tag team. And uh, one of them just t- uh, turns on the <laughs> other as, as it was going in for a tag and just walks out on him. And I was like, why are you doing this game? And I was like, fuck it, it's going to be part of the storyline. And uh, it, it did work because um, one guy actually put a promo out saying um, to, to them saying, you know, the Hog Eye Dynasty should join. But he didn't say his brother. He just said, you know, um, cause what was it? Logan and Connor. Um, i trying to remember which one was which. I think it was Connor. Yeah, he said, oh, yeah, Connor, you should join the uh, is it Trailer Park Corporation. I think it was. Yeah, you should jo- come and join the Trailer Park Corporation. And because of that promo, I used that promo to kind of backstory the other one. To say, oh yeah, he turned his back on you because, obviously, um, you know, you haven't decided if you're joining the the uh, trailer port corporation, and you know, you're leaving your brother on your his own, and yeah, universe mode. You should just try it. I think it's just going to be one of these things where you go, you either love it or hate it, but it helps with booking because the cutscenes was just out of his world. Uh, I mean, like there were some cutscenes where. Um, somebody will walk, walk out and go sit at commentary. And I was like, you don't have those sort of um, cut scenes using um, story designer. Yeah. Uh, and then a added bonus is when you're doing the match, they're actually sitting at, at commentary. So you can either got an option, you can either go and interact with that person. And the only thing it does is he stands up, looks at you and then walks out. I was like, okay, right, we'll try not to do that as much, but, you know, it it, it kind of helps with the, uh, with how you plan your show, and, um, that's how half my booking was, I mean, I looked at the card and I go, mm, I don't really like the card as much, so I just mix it up, but that's how half my matches are booked, um, because I didn't really have a booking team, and people weren't that interested in the show, um, I mean, I did have views, and I did have people who were saying, oh, my God, your editing on the show is awesome. You know, can I be a part of the show? And that's how I got a few people to join. But I think compared to other core shows, there was lack of interest. Yeah. Um, Now, I talked about uh, Levi and Austin, and I'm sure... You've heard all that's been said about them for like the last eight, ten months, um, and you're and you're friends with with them. So I mean, at, at least I'm pretty sure you guys are. You guys oh are yeah, good. yeah, yeah. We're all good. Uh, what 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 are your thoughts on like some of the things that they've they've been involved with or that they've done? Because it's caused a bit of a stir. Yeah, it's it's caused a lot of stir. Um, I mean, from my my experiences, obviously with Levi, um, yeah, I can understand why people got um, really pissed off of him. Um, again, um, everybody's lives are different. Um, mine at the moment, I I've just got back into full time work. Um, I hardly have any many days off, so if, if I do bring back the VCW, it'll be like pretty much probably two shows a month, maybe maybe only one show a month. Um, but yes, yeah, certain people. I mean, I I could um, be on Facebook at work and just be going through my timeline, jump on the COH fan page post something and that be it but I can't do a promo because I'm sat at work right um and I guess that's where, where I see with you know certain people I mean like the um massive go at Levi because he um 
posted a playlist of his favourite mans on uh, Facebook, but he couldn't post on the COH page. Almost um, every day. I mean, that, that's the thing what certain people do. I mean, obviously, you, you know, you have your personal life and you have your right. core life. Um, but, yeah, I, I can see from both sides, obviously, Levi, you know, for him, that was probably stuck in his phone for, like... I mean, I, I, I'm a guy, I mean, who loves music. I used to be a, uh, a radio DJ and all that. And, I mean... One of the excuses that was used, and it's not just that these guys use it, it's other people have used it in the in the past before, is the whole, well, we have lives in regards to if, like, say, work wasn't put in for a long while, and the explanation would be, oh, we've had lives. And, and, I, and I've said, and others have said time and time again, that peop, people do have lives, but there are plenty of people... In fact, most people on call do have lives, and they find a way to do even the little bit of effort. And and I know you you've had instances where you've been you know very busy in life, or you've had th- things go on in life, and even if it was l- not as much as usual, still put in work, even if it was just a comment here and there on the, the COH page. So. What is your take when, I mean, even in general or even in their case, when the the excuse is, well, we have lives? Um, it's hard to say, really, because, I mean, like I said, everybody's different. Um, I mean, when I was feuding with uh, Mitch, um, I felt that some of the time he were, wasn't replying when I wanted him to, um, it's it is a downer. I mean, it does make the feud not work well. But um, I think if um, if they're not responding, keep bullying at it. Uh, you know, make them respond. It, it, you know, give them a reason to respond. If uh, you know, let's take your um, your um, your feud with it, then. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe you should have been more um, direct on Facebook. You should have, you know, called them out more in character on Facebook, you know, no, every day and make it, make them respond to you rather than wait for their response or wait for them to make a promo during the show. Because, um, I mean, like, some people, they only just watch their segments. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, if, and if they know they're not booked... They don't know that you've made a promo of them in the show, or you know, I mean, I, I, I'm I know I'm feeding the rumours here, but you know, but um, I was told that both guys um, obviously want to leave COH. Um, yeah, that, that is the rumour, yes. Um, I did talk to um, Austin. Says I, uh, I got to- uh, obviously uh, Cash told me the other day. Says I. Um, Oh, Austin's uh, thinking about leaving, and uh, I was like, so I spoke to uh, I think it was only a few days ago. I said to Austin, I said, oh, what's this about you leaving? He says, oh yeah, I s- said about this the other day, and uh, he says, you know, I've I've lost interest. Really, uh, I don't really watch any core to be honest. Um, it, it's it's sad. I mean, I mean, I, I like Austin. I mean, I, me and Austin, we, we're we're constantly on there. Uh, 2K, we're always playing on that. Uh, you know, we hit each other up on Skype, Facebook, and you know, I have a good um, communication with him, him and um, David Rivera. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and sometimes Levi. I mean, it depends if Levi is not working or not. But yeah, we're, we're always constantly on 2K when we can. Um, if he, if he leaves, it'd be a shame because he's 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 very good. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the guy. I mean, I think I feel that he needs a singles run. Um, I feel like the the tag team has kind of run its course, in my opinion. I mean, they're, they're a great tag team uh, if they do promos together, and the promos they have done, um, a few of, I've said, you know, that was quite an all right promo. You know, for a tag team. I mean, 
I'm not saying tag team promos are the best because hell, there's a lot of tag team promos I like. They're not as great as singles promos, but you know, for a tag team, you got to enjoy what you can out of it. Um, it's like, um, for example, um, David Rivera and the one Mark Kennedy. Um, their promos as a tag team, I don't really enjoy them as much compared to obviously rap metals. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'd, I, 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 would, I would love to see him do a singles run in COH, but I just feel like at the moment he's kind of stuck in like this tag team. Um, I, I, for both of them, I think they need a singles run because I feel like they're not both as happy being in rap metal. I feel like the whole um, everybody calling them crap metal it's kind of got to him personally because they just feel like, are we really that shit of a tag team when they're not? And I've heard, and I've heard about all this, how, you know, the things that people have, have said, have gotten to whether it be the both of them or at the very least Austin and whether it be crap metal. And, you know, the whole crap metal thing was simply because, because it was obvious. It's, Rap, you put C in front of crap. It, it's an easy thing to do to the heel egotistical bastards say about them. And then they were pretty crap. So it, it was kind of fitting. And and then it, I've, I, I've heard that like Austin is saying stuff like um, he wants to leave because he's being criticized when... Don't we all get criticized in in COH? And a lot of us get outright not just criticism but hate. R- rap metal, it's been – for them, it's really been criticism and saying that they don't put in enough work or a- any work. There's people who get outright hate. I get hate. You get hate. But, you know, we, we don't be like give in to that and we're like, oh, well, I want to leave and not do any work. It's kind of like the guy's 16 years old and he, it seems like he can't take criticism, which is, which it would be really bad because you know, probably more, a lot more than I would that in work, in this life, you're going to get a lot of criticism. Oh, yeah. I mean, we all get a lot of criticism. I mean, I get criticism on Ask FM. I mean, every kid's and saying that I shouldn't have got this. I ain't, I'm, you know, part of the circle jerk. You know, I'm like, since when? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I know the people that have been listed as circle jerkers. I mean, but I've never seen myself as part of the. the the list, but apparently I'm on the list now. All right, uh, you're part of the team. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it was just like, is this a recent promotion? I was like, <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, everybody has their own uh, criticism. It depends where it's shown. Um, mine's shown on Ask FM. Theirs is shown on the Facebook page. Yours is probably shown in PMs. Um, yes. You know, Steve's probably shown in podcasts. Uh, Caleb's is shown on Skype every fucking day because he's a <laughs> retard. <laughs> Wait for him to say something. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> nope. Oh. Yeah, it's like that. I mean, who knows what what will happen with them? I mean, maybe they'll leave. Maybe they'll stay. I don't know. I'm sure we'll know soon enough, but let's get back to you. So, we left off with COH with the beginning of your feud with Nitro, and I know this because I clearly, I, I, I knew when this was happening, and and you would tell me, and Nitro would tell me, and you, you kind of alluded to that, you picked Nitro to be the guy. Yeah, because I felt he was the right guy. Nitro had... Me and Nitro, you could say, we had the same storyline for for years now. Um, 
we both started in YTCW. We both got fired from YTCW. How he got probably a bit more because um, he got brought back in with another guy. Um, if and it was Jeff Hardy zero something two two nine seven. Uh, that was his um, his YouTube channel name. So obviously back in YTCW, there weren't no guys. There was guys weren't called like you know. Um, there was no J Crack or um, M Accuracy. It was more you know. Obviously, Steve's channel was Monoxide one two three four five six or I think that's right. He'll correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and that's that. That was uh, obviously it got shortened down just to monoxide because obviously the numbers just didn't make sense. But s- for certain people, the numbers was there. Um, I mean, MB wrestler. I mean, you know, to me, obviously, yeah, it made sense. But when you think of it now, I think, why would you call somebody MB wrestler? Um, but back then, it was like you know, obviously, it made sense because that was his YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, Obviously, Mutron, that was his YouTube channel. Um, and then others and all that. I mean, hell, I was just called Scott back then because my my YouTube channel was, uh, was Scott for Wrestling. Now it's Scott for Wrestling version 2 because I deleted my YouTube account. Um, and uh, I think I think I was actually called Scott for Wrestling at the time and, uh, and then it just got dropped down to Scott. But... Um, yeah, him and Nitro um, both got fired. Then they got rehired, and they became a tag team called the We Got Fired Club. <laughs> and that, that's the sort of shit he, David used to do. And, uh, you know, Nitro went through um, not really getting pushed, and then apparently he was supposed to get pushed. And then Steve took over, and Steve was pushing him. And then David took it back, and then you know the push that was supposed to be for him never ha- really happened. It was just you know shit after shit. You know Steve was doing a good job with him, but David was wasn't. And that's where I was thinking to Travis. You know he does. I mean I saw some of Nitro's promos. It's like oh my god, he's doing promos now. Because back then he wouldn't do promos. He was that young, did do promos. I mean we had a good. I mean, he, Nitro was one of the first people I probably had on my show. Hmm. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And um, I was like, I want to drop the belt to him because I think he is worth it. Um, he does promos. That was one of my main concerns. I'm not dropping the belt to somebody who doesn't do promos. There you go, COH. It, you know, you you now know the spoilers for when I drop the uh, the COH title, it's going to be someone who does fucking promos. Because what is the fucking point? And why would you drop the belt to somebody who only messages on the Facebook page? You know, my, 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 the, uh, the, the, new, the new COH champion is Kane because he can't fucking speak. <laughs> <laughs> you know, why? Why would you do that? You know, you might you might as well get fucking Stephen Hawkins to come out and fucking you know he he's he's now able to fucking wrestle, but he comes down with a fucking wheelchair and fucking Microsoft Sam to speak. But you know hell he fucking wrestles. <laughs> yeah, and, and that makes a, a lot of sense. Hopefully to everyone else too, because you should drop it to someone who does promos. And in Nitro's case, he was. He he definitely deserved it out of those um the guys that were coming in and you know it is weird because he he him and uh, Fisk were over on Slam and Fisk won the the match to get the the pri the or the tournament to get the pride title shot but it was weird because Nitro just stayed on Slam and it was it was weird because he didn't re- he didn't get called I guess you could say quote unquote called up yet until you guys really got rolling with the the internet title feud. Yeah, I mean, he he didn't get called up, but at the same time, I was showing up on Slam. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, it made sense for reason why I got drafted to Slam because I was promoting Slam. I, I was one of the guys, even though I, in character, I was bashing the people on Slam, saying you know they're not worthy and all that kind of crap, and you know, 
Um, but at the same time, I was like, I wanted to be booked on more Slam matches. I, I, I wanted to try and make Slam look more interesting. And, you know, obviously with the draft and all of that, I do think Slam is the better show um, because we we do have the familiar faces that people want to see. Ray Gettis, uh, The Patriot, uh, obviously Egotistical Bastards. Not Ryan Carroll, though. Well, half of us. But, yeah. Um... yeah it, it, I thought it was cool. I, I don't know if you've seen or heard about this. And th- and this is what you ended up doing, what, what this guy wanted to do. I, I remember uh, Daniel Bryan, he won the Air Canada Championship at WrestleMania this year. And he had the idea of only appearing on SmackDown. This was a, now, of course, it didn't end up happening because he ended up getting hurt. But I, is a, I think that's a pretty um, fair comparison. Like you were the the internet champion, and you showed up. I mean, yeah, on background you do what you need to do with the Acura Enterprise, but when it came to the internet championship, you were more on Slam, and it was almost like you were the unofficial like Slam champion over there. Yeah, yeah, that's how that's how I saw it. Um, I mean. I want to. I, I'm always. This is the one thing I, I've always said from the beginning. I don't care about championships. I don't care about winning. All I care about is put me in a good feud. Put me in a good feud with anyone on the roster, and I'll tr- I'll try my hardest to make it good. Even if it makes me look like a total jobber, um, totally crap. As long as it makes them look good, I, I don't mind. I, I, um, that's one of the reasons why I kind of liked, even though it felt like, why the fuck am I feuding with them? Um, my feud with um, the new movement. Mm-hmm. I did enjoy it, but obviously it, I did feel like sometime I thought, is this feud going to actually end at some point? Yeah. Um, but, you know, I was putting them over. I was trying to make them more out there, and I, I did a good job. I mean, n- now, you know, people notice Mark Kennedy, uh, people's noticed um, David Rivera, and the fact that they got pushed into the um, tag team tournament, I feel that I was part of that, because if at the time they weren't doing anything, they didn't have any feuds, and Mark Kennedy was just throwing out random promos to anyone, and I feel like I gave him a little bit of legitimacy with a feud. Um, and that's what I like doing. I like That's why I'd, I trash talk everybody on the Facebook page because <laughs> I'm looking for feuds. I'm always, you know, I want to build people up. I want to make them, you know, if I can wound somebody up to the point where they can do a promo, I'm going to keep doing it. Um, but yeah, um, one of the things with uh, obviously going back to Nitro is um, I wanted to make that the next Daniel Mars versus Scott Adams kind of feud, uh, but obviously it didn't go to plan. We both got busy. Um, I think I was um, in and out of hospital, and I, I um, had my foot bandaged up, and I couldn't walk and couldn't get out of bed, so um, I weren't be able to do promos. And if I was able to do promos, it weren't video promos. And it kind of really pissed me off because I really wanted to make that the best fucking feud. You know, I wanted it to be like, you know, feud of the year. But it didn't go to plan. Um, but I was still happy with the outcome. I felt, you know, Nitro was deserving and he he's done. Hell, he's making the internet. To, uh, well, I think one of the things I felt bad about dropping the belt to Nitro was the fact that he made it look good. <laughs> I mean, his internet title run was better than mine, and I felt like I was like, "Fuck! Why did I? Why did I suggest dropping the belt?" Because I was like, one, it was like he's the longest reigning internet champion. I was like, "Fuck! Why did I? Why did I suggest dropping the belt? I could have at least got longest reigning champion and then dro- drop the belt." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, but no, he did a good job of it. He made it legitimate. He, you know, open challenge. You know, it, it was. You could you could say, you know, he had pretty much like the the John Cena open challenge 
legitimacy or like, over the belt, and I liked it. And I think the only disappointing thing was, again, but this is with everybody, is the other half. You can do the promos, but you need the other half to do the promos to make the feud look good. Uh, but he did it fucking awesomely, and you know he didn't even need them to do promos to make it look good. Oh yeah, he did. He did awesome. Now you dropped the belt to Nitro the anniversary, which was awesome. And then after that, uh, we saw it was the the split of. Well, actually, hang on. Before we get to that, all right, this we gotta talk about. The Seven Deadly Sins. It, and, the, dear God, the Seven Deadly Sins versus the Ten Commandments feud, uh, which was... Should have never happened. Yeah, never should have happened. Uh, first, Who's I, whose idea was it to do the Seven Deadly Sins? I mean, I, at the first... At the, it kind of grown on me, but at first I was like, why? Well... I, I can say whose idea it was because I know whose idea it was. Uh, it, it was Carol's idea. Now, the idea, it was good. The timing was awful, though. Um, oh, yeah, it was awful because, you know, it was just before, like, pretty much everybody was going to split up because of the brand split. Um, and the people who was in the, involved in it was just like, why are you involved? Why are you involved? Why are you involved? Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, this, it was awful. And I, I, I liked the concept of, like, you know, expanding and making more of a stable than a group. Uh, but it just, oh, I don't know. It just it's a good idea in theory. Like, the Egotistical Bastards, the Anchor Enterprise, two of the biggest groups in the show. All, and it w- it's always, like, f- we would always, like, kind of hint at it like on the page like that the accurate enterprise didn't really like anyone but they kind of tolerated ego mm. and, and you know we would do like funny exchanges where like you guys were like you guys were on top and we would do nice things to please the guys on the top and stuff like that and it was like the, the only guys that got along like all these bad guys got along while everyone else was like hey Hated the Accurate Enterprise or didn't like Ego, and it and it was always it was just kind of it was kind of funny that we had it, a, maybe a very very loose alliance and kind of just like a ha ha thing, and then it was like well what if we did become a full group because in th- like like I said in theory like it'd be great we would be the most powerful group there would be. There would be no one else. Like you put the seven of us together, especially like around that point, it would it was insane. You had ego with the tag team titles. You were the internet champion. Um, Alex was the world champion. Steve was the uh, the old champion, you could say, because he had the old belt because yeah. um, of the whole uh, Goonie and Kevin belt thing. Me. And then Fisk had the pride title, yeah. so so all the belts were were in the group, and it was like, oh. but it was just bad timing because the group lasted at least in like call time about two weeks, and mm-hmm. like if this group would if, if the Acura Enterprise didn't end up splitting, like if the Acura Enterprise would have gone on for say say even just like another six months, or this happened six months before, then it oh. could have been huge. It would, you know, it could be on the lines of you know, nation of domination, but instead it turned into, hey, this is the spirit squad. Mm-hmm. It was like, <laughs> oh yeah, we're we're together, and then, and then we had like one episode, one episode where we took over, which I, I did not like the episode at all. Um, I was, yeah, that was a clusterfuck because I was supposed to be doing something, and because of my schedule. Uh, the fact that I didn't want to really do commentary. No, I did want to do commentary, but it was like Travis wanted us to do it in groups, mm-hmm. and no, it was like everybody's grouped up apart from me. It was like, what do we do now? And it was like time zone differences, and yeah, it was just a clusterfuck. And I think in the end, I was supposed to do ring announcing, and even that didn't get happen. Mm-hmm. I was like, whatever. Yeah. It- so. 
<laughs> so the storyline was supposed to be, I did my match and I went home. <laughs> and then I came back later. <laughs> and then the blow-off to most of the angles happened at anniversary. Like, so there was, like, no build. Like, we were on top for, like, a week. And and it didn't help. Like, it was even, it was one thing. All right, when we established the seven deadly sins, all right, that was fine. But then it was overkill when the Ten Commandments became a thing. Oh, that was just like, literally, like, right after the episode airs, all of a sudden there's a, a, a baby face group to go against us, and they outnumber us. Yeah, I mean, I can understand a few people being in the group, but then the rest of them was like, why? There were The people who were in it made made no sense. There there were people who should have been part of the Ten Commandments and were not. And it just goes back to the whole thing. Usually when there's a heel group, at least in wrestling, there, a heel group usually is dominant for a very long time. And then some then these faces come together, which I get you couldn't do that with how short this thing was, which is why maybe the Ten Commandments should never have happened, never should have been a thing. And it's just so stupid. Why would the baby face group have more members? I mean, one of the people I know was definitely should have been, and it was was Max because yeah. of the whole um, J thing. But the rest of them, I just couldn't really see why they was in there because um, no one was really feuding with us at the time. It was like this group's came out of nowhere and they've just joined up with Max. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how it felt like to me. Um, but yeah, it was just like, why? You know, just because we just said, oh yeah, the seven deadly sins on Facebook, it was like, yeah, we're going to be the Ten Commandments. We've got more people. Like, fuck you. I was like, oh, okay. It was just, ugh, bad. But I mean, I think my reply to it at the time was, um, there was like, oh yeah, with, with the seven deadly sins, uh, somebody put on there and they put... Um, Oh, but we're the Ten Commandments, and I was like, "But I'm in that champion." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was my reply to everything. But I'm in that champion. I don't really give a shit. <laughs> oh, and but you know, it, it happened. Whatever. Um, and then after anniversary, the next night, that's when the whole um, when Alex comes out and he. Attacked inaccuracy, which was like, all right, well, if the seven deadly sins wasn't already over, it's definitely over now. And not just that, the accurate enterprise. I know that was that was like so awkward because I was like, okay, where does this leave me? Yeah, I was like, where does it leave me? <laughs> this? Like, you guys didn't say a single thing about it. like it would. It was like, all right, Alex and, and inaccuracy, they got their issues. All right, this is interesting, but not uh, you like it was Scott Adams just moved on to the Money in the Bank. Fisk just moved on to his feud as the Great D, and it was like, oh well, they they were our friends. They were in a group. Uh, who cares? It, it, it did feel like you know it, it's like one of those like uh, you know we're all we're walking down the street and then all of a sudden you know it's like it, it kind of felt like that was you know hey, you slept with my girlfriend kind of thing. It's like, I'm going to fight you. And it's like, me and Fist just walks away and go, yeah, this is not our problem. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to go to the pub. <laughs> we'll just fuck this shit. <laughs> it was just... And it, it was so weird because I'm like, all right, one of these episodes, even if it, the littlest thing, it could have been, you had a promo or you ha- you got interviewed by Bubsy or something. And they were like, oh, what, what are your thoughts on this? Even just to say, well, you know, they, they have their thing, I'm focused on it. It wasn't even any of that. It was just like, we're just going to ignore that there were two other members of the Accurate Enterprise. Yeah. I mean, was that just, is just how it was meant to be? Like, did, do you know if, like, Travis didn't want you or Fisk to, to say anything? Or... Was just I don't, and he never brought it up. I don't think he knew what to do with us, to be honest. Um, cause I think at the same time, 
everybody had their own thing. I mean, Ego had their thing, we had our thing. It's it was one of those okay. Well, we don't see the point in bringing you in. I mean, it, I think it would have made it here a lot better because uh, it could have been, you know, could it have been like Fisk being, um, hey, I don't want nothing to do with this, I'm leaving. So Fisk goes, goes off and does his own thing. And then, you know, it's pretty much like the original three again, and it's like, which side am I on? Am I on Alex's side or am I on Steve's side? But the way the feud went, it's because there's like pretty much two psychopaths going at it. It was like, yeah, it doesn't need anybody to be in that feud. You know, you, just, you don't go and side with a psychopath because that psychopath could t- turn on you. It's like, yeah, I'm going to step away. <laughs> but, again, it's just one of those things. I mean, you could go over every single feud in COH and go, you could have done that different. But at the same time, why do it different? Because it was good the first time around. True. But while they had their little uh, spat, you know, they weren't getting along very well, you went on and you were a part of the Money in the Bank ladder match. And it was an interesting Money in the Bank ladder match because there were people – there were, there wasn't too much star power in the match. Like I marked out when Jay got put in it. I was like, <laughs> yes, somebody decent in the match apart from Daniel Mars. Yeah, because you looked at the match and – I mean, the, at least the way I saw it, I thought, oh, man, Lester is definitely winning this match. I, I, I put my money on Lester as well. I was like, Lester's going to win this match. I was like, fuck. What was that? Because I don't know why, you know, but every time it comes to like something like a ladder match or a fucking Royal Rumble, I'm normally like, every time I watch it, I'm like, yeah, I'm in the Royal Rumble or a Battle Royal. I'm like, okay. Over the top route, battle roll, I must say. Um, and then I go, okay, I'm looking good in this match. And there I go. I'm over the top rope. And I'm like, disappointing. <laughs> I thought it was going to be like the like, final two, but nope. <laughs> it, yeah, it was like, it, it looked it looked at, and I'd, I'd have, I didn't think at all that, and I've, and I've said this, and Sonny knows this, and... Everyone was. I didn't think he he should have won. I thought the whole time it's like, well, I thought the the biggest name, the guy that made the most sense, was for you to win, and I like, but and you you actually won. I was pretty shocked about that. I I was shocked. I didn't think I was ready. Um, how until I cashed in the briefcase recently, I still think. To this day, I weren't ready. Um, I've always doubted myself, though, but um, it's one of those things. I mean, I'm I'm happy. I'm glad about it. Um, I'm glad that Travis, you know, sees something in potential in me. Um, I mean, people have, you know, helped with the booking with Travis. Uh, I mean, people have told me, you know, certain people have said, hey, you should do this the cash in or you know and uh, the fact that people have had faith in me it's, it's, it shocked me um, I mean the whole corporation idea what's going on I mean I didn't even know about that I was totally out of the loop um, I mean I guess I could spoil one of my ideas Um well, actually, it's not my idea. It's actually Austin's idea. Um, but I didn't want to say it was Austin's idea because every t- every time I say it's somebody else's idea, Travis goes, yeah, okay, we're not doing that. <laughs> and uh, one of the ideas was, because I, I, I really wanted to have a Patriot feud. Mm-hmm. I, I, still, I still do. There might still be a Patriot feud. You don't know. But... Um, I guess now it would be more of a, a mocking patriot. But um, my idea was um, Steve uh, Emacracy. No! The Patriot. Sorry, I'm getting champions mixed up on different shows. Uh, the Patriot. Oh, let's see. That's a spoiler. Steve's going to be champion on COH. Again. 
Oh, you think he's going to beat Gunny? Yeah. So bad. No, oh, he's going to beat. Le- no, he's going to beat Lester. Who'd you? He's going to be. He's going to beat Lester. He's going to beat Lester. He's going to be new Pride champion. <laughs> He'll be the first world Pride champion. <laughs> um. But um. Yeah. Um. Patriot versus Red Gaius. Um. I think one of the ideas I said about um maybe make have me a special guest referee, seeing as I'm money in the bank. Um. I screw Ray. Mm-hmm. Ray gets pissed off me to the point that I have to go into hiding. <laughs> um, or, I don't know, I do something to piss Ray off. I, I, even if I don't even to be in the match, I screw Ray. I let Patriot win, screw Ray. I do a promo saying, Ray, um, no hard feelings, man, but if I'm going to cash in money in the bank, I'm going to do it on the Patriot because at the end of the day, Ray, you know, you're a tough son of a bitch and I want an easy win. You know, honesty there, you know, easy win. You know, I can get a win over a Patriot, but you, you know, I don't I don't want to fucking put myself out. You know, if I can get an easy win just like that, I'll do it. And uh, that that's my reason for screwing him. And obviously, I would, you know, coming up to Anarchy in the UK, you know, I thought, okay, Ray's going to come after me. I won't show up to the show, but I will. And this is this is the idea. Uh, Patriot does an open challenge match, and uh, Patriot does a, and I come out as the British Patriot. Um, basically, I'm dressed up as Patriot, but I'm the British version of the Patriot. Mm-hmm. Um, and the idea is obviously, um, I have a match. I lose the match. I get pissed off to, uh, at the end. And I beat the shit out of Patriot. And then all of a sudden, EW comes running down to the ring with the money in the briefcase. As he come down to the, uh, the ring, I take off the mask. You see it's me, and I cash in. And that's how I win the money in the bank. Uh, how I win the world title. That was my idea. Obviously, it didn't happen. Um, but there you go. That was. But obviously, it, was, it wasn't my idea. It was Austin's idea. To, for me to obviously... Uh, be the British Patriot, mm-hmm. um, and I, I thought that would work because it gives EW, you know, because the, the whole um, EW was the holder of the briefcase, he would protect it and all that. It would have made sense for him to run down to the ring rather than me run down to the ring. Because hell, you know, I'm, I'm a I'm a brawler, not a fucking high flyer. Why would I run to the fucking ring? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'll walk slowly down to the ring with a briefcase, and I'll act cocky. You know, that's that's why I'm glad that when um, Travis did the whole um, cash in, I didn't run down to the ring, and I was happy about that. Um, but the whole corporate, damn, that was just like shit. And I'll see. Uh, this is bringing up um, Ask FM. Um, People get uh, bashed Sonny about. Obviously, he did a pipe bomb. A quote unquote pipe bomb. Quote unquote pipe bomb. Um, yeah, it wasn't a pipe bomb. Yeah, people don't but, know what that that means. But he had some facts, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree and disagree. Um, but one of the things I do agree with him, um, the fact of me and Travis teaming up. You know, a, a, you know, a couple of months ago, I. I literally knocked out the boss and nearly got fired. <laughs> you know, he was about to fire me, so I didn't then just knock him out and didn't get fired. And uh, the only backlash I got from that was uh, I wasn't in the survival of the fittest. Um, and you had to wrestle the amazing punk. Yeah, but in the end, what was it? I I didn't I didn't um, get into the survival of the fittest, but I ended up putting myself into the internet championship match. And 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 that's a, that's a good um you know th- point that he brought up and and like I point out because I got asked what I thought about it and I gave a very um lengthy response and I point out that there's been so many people in wrestling who've been against the authority figure yeah, and then Randy later Orton. have joined up with them. Randy Orton and uh, literally Son- Sonny did say and For Sonny please. did. S- Sonny did actually spoil, obviously, my cash in, because I, I was at work, and he actually said congratulations on becoming 
um, co- uh, corporate champion and being the Randy Orton of COH. Hmm. It was like, and at first I was like, what, what are you on about? It's like, you cashed in it and won the title and all that, and now you're corporate. And I was like, okay. And <laughs> it did make my day, because all day at, at work, I was just like, I want to get home, I want to get home, I want to get home. <laughs> and I had a smile on my face all day. I, I could, you know, I was like, you know when you're like really, really happy for some reason, mm-hmm. and people are like, why the fuck are you smiling? I was, that was how happy I was. And, uh, you know, because I work at a petrol station, and... Uh, obviously serving customers and it was just like <laughs> I I think they just why is he really smiling and happy and I was like yeah but there's a reason why I'm happy like that and yeah when I got home I was like oh my god that was pretty fucking awesome um, how it goes from now I, I mean I'm still out of the loop I mean I'm just I, I've tried to talk to Travis about it, but at the moment, I think it's just go with the flow, and Travis knows what he's doing. And I, I, I never disagree with Travis's booking. I mean, so far he's booked me quite all right. I mean, I've been happy with most of his booking. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, one of the things I'm I, I'm going to play along, obviously, with the whole. Uh, Travis thing is um, I'm going to I'm going to bring up YTCW and you know I, w- I would say the original people of the YCT uh, YTCW backlash and all that I'm not saying the pay per view name I think we did have actually have pay per view called YTCW backlash I'm on about the, the backlash of obviously the shit what we got from it you know um, Travis was one of the guys who got shit from YTCW from David and everybody else um so you could say, you know, I, I fooled you all along, you know, in COH, you know, you think, oh, me and Travis has been, you know, fighting and he doesn't want me in COH, but all along, you know, he's been, you know, pretty much brother from another mother kind of crap, and, you know. So that's, that's how I'm going to play it off, you know. And, it, you know... One thing I pointed out because, because some, because I, I think I was talking on Skype with someone and I can't remember who, but someone was like, like that it was it was weird that like Travis is is with you and when you and you look at the story, yeah, you guys have had your um your issues. I I I, I compared it to when CM Punk won the WWE Championship at Money in the Bank. Vince McMahon clearly. Didn't want CM Punk to be the champion. Now it was in his case because he was leaving, but still he didn't want Punk to be the champion. And Travis does not want Ray to be the champion. So Ray being the champion, he's got to do something. He's got things. He's got to think of something. So he has his Plan B. If if Plan A doesn't work out and that Patriot retains the title, then Plan B is well, who has a guaranteed shot? Mister Money in the Bank. This, this is another thing, though, right? Travis booked the match straight after, right, and put me in there. He, you know, it didn't ha- I mean, the way I saw it is, like, I didn't really need the money in the bank briefcase because he, he could have just put me in the match straight away after, and it was, still would have made sense, but obviously, you know, cashing in or that. I love the fact that I got disqualified. <laughs> that was just like, yeah, typical. Wait, me. does that mean you? Does that mean you actually lost your cash in? Yeah, and you won on the rematch. <laughs> yeah. I don't feel bad anymore. <laughs> it, it it was cool though. You, and well, then, well, technically, I I didn't lose the cash in because obviously, um. He restarted Travis, the match. Tra- tra- Travis restarted the match and also said, I forgot to say this is an ADD match. <laughs> so let me have my moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, he could have just booked as a normal match. You know, yeah, right, okay, you're now the uh, COH champion, but now I want you to have your first title defense against. Boom. And he could have went through a whole gauntlet of people. Um, I mean, what? How cool would that be? You know, winning this COH title and still being money in the bank at the same time. 
I mean, I could have used that money. I, I still might even say this in storyline wise. I might say technically I didn't cash in because Travis told me to have that match. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still money in the bank, you know. And uh, because I want to get rid of Ray, um, I'm issuing out. You know, obviously I put on the Facebook page. I'm issuing out a bounty. <laughs> Whoever takes out tra- <laughs> takes out Ray. I mean, obviously no one's really going to get a title shot. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> it was like, I had to, try, it was hard to like come back, because Ray's good at fucking comebacks, I've got to say, and uh, me and him talk on Facebook, and it was like, he, he was been talking about this feud for ages, and uh, I've been talking to him, I says, I really want to have a feud with you, I think it would work, because we could throw back at each other, and we totally banter and banter, and, uh, it was like, fuck, what do I do put for this? And I was like, because he put out, oh, he's going to gun, gun out for me. And I was like, right, so this is a hunting game. Well, I can do, two can play hunting games. Right, I'm putting a bounty on you. You know, first one to take you out, you know, gets money and all that. And then he was like, oh, well, if you're offering money, I can offer money as well. And I was like, yeah, but I'm offering a future title shot. When I say future title shot, it means in the future, not right away. <laughs> I had to try to word it because it's like obviously I, I, I'm trying to play the character of a champion who doesn't want to defend his belt at all costs. You know, I'm the champion now, but I don't really want to defend the belt. I'll have matches, but I don't want to defend the belt. <laughs> <laughs> but regardless, you won, and you know, I'm I, at least I hope you saw like the stuff I was putting. I was very happy you won, and. I didn't like what some people ended up doing. Some people, you know, I mean, you've had trolls before this. Oh, yeah. So, like, I, it's nothing new. I love my trolls. <laughs> it's just new material for them. And right away, they came your way. They came Travis's way, trying to, you know, take shots and say that you you didn't deserve it and you're not a star like I don't know like like other people that they named. I mean, I'm sure you probably don't take them too seriously like like others do. But like, what what were you thinking like after you won and then these people right away are sending these troll questions to you and trying to get my, you around my, my my answer was legitimate. And that's how I felt. You know. Some of those answers, yeah, I troll them back. Some of them, I actually do give them the full fucking answer of how how I feel. And you know, I mean, a few times when they're saying, "Oh yeah, you don't deserve being money in the bank," and I was like, "Yeah, but so does Seamus. Seamus doesn't deserve money in the bank, but he's money in the bank." <laughs> and that's where you know when people are saying like, my last one was like, "Oh, how does it feel to be Seamus right now?" And I was like, well, "Pretty good." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I don't really care what the trolls say. Sometimes they just give me a giggle, and I'm like, right, okay, what can I say back to them? You know, I, I'm going to troll you back. You know, if you give me shit, I'll give you shit back. I don't care who you are, uh, you know. And that's how I, I, I just take I take everything with a pinch of salt. But you know, it did get to the point where I was like, yeah, this is getting too much. I actually deleted my Ask FM account off my phone because it was getting to the point where I was like. I'm spending more time trying to banter back with you. And I was like, why waste my time? But I was enjoying it for the most time. I mean, I was like, and I still don't know how they're able to troll me because I have my privacy settings uh, all set so you can't do anonymous, but they're still able to do it. I don't know why the fuck that is doing it, but there's some sort of bug with Ask FM. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if it's because I'm following the troll and the troll's following me. That could be a, a thing. Um, they're like, or is it, you know, you know, when you send everybody the same message, yeah, is that bugged or something? You know, I don't, I, I don't know what's bugged, but it works for some people to able to troll me, and then it works. Some people can't troll me. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you know. It's- it's weird, but, you know, it, it's kind of like, they're almost like, just like small children. Like, you, you know, the this, this stuff they say, because I, I, get, I get some of the similar things. I just usually don't answer them anymore. 
and I get pretty much what what is said to you, just replace world championship with tag team championship. And you're like, oh, how does it feel to, you know, be be a circle jerker and and politic to get this and do this? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like what? And they're like, oh, you don't deserve this. And like, well, clearly I do because the guy running the show gave me the belt. Like, it, it, you know, if you didn't deserve to be a world champion, Travis wouldn't have given you the belt. I mean, it's, it's it's like when they say stuff like, um, how does it feel to suck Travis's dick to get a world title shot? And I'm like, you know, everybody knows that I haven't, you know, sucked Travis's dick. But I, I, I just feel like replying back to him sometimes, like saying, yeah. But you have, have fondled that. his balls. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like replying back to him, just trolling back and saying, fuck yeah, of course I sucked his dick. You see how big it is? <laughs> Because that's the sort of answer I feel that they should get, because, you know... Yes, they deserve. Yeah. I mean, I just troll them back. I, you know, if I, if you give me a stupid question, I'm going to give you a stupid answer. Yeah. And I, I will make it fucking sound ridiculous. Hell, I'll give you a fucking paragraph. And that's what I do. I, 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 I find them so funny that I give them a paragraph. Because if they want to keep trolling me, then they've got to read my shit before they fucking reply because I know when they're going to give me the same old shit I'm going to just say well you didn't fucking read my paragraph did you bitch <laughs> uh, people people are are funny but re- regardless you're the champ now and I mean you don't you don't know what you said you're out of the loop you don't know what's going on I mean may, maybe it's you and Ray I mean or maybe maybe Great D's one because te- Great D did beat you earlier that night, so you would think he would be in- involved somewhere or earn some kind of shot, or the or Travis will just ignore that happened. I don't know. All I, all I know is pretty much my feud is going to be I'm going to take on the whole of fucking CCL uh, and the whole of Rednet Nation because that's what I do. <laughs> It's got, it's I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. But at the moment, it just I like I love the banter with people on Facebook. Um, fucking raise fans. I mean, um, I, I I get where um, and fuck this. I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot here now. Um, this is where I'm gonna get hate from raise fans. Uh oh, this is my favorite so, part. All right, here we go. Uh, Race fans, if you're listening right now, I do love you and everything like that, but... Um, There's already a dislike out of impulse. You haven't even said anything yet. Um, it, it, you know, the fact that I do love you, I feel that you should switch off now and come back in about 20 minutes. Maybe when it's at the words association part, maybe that part. Um, but I, I agree with Patreon. The way they came onto the Facebook page and... It just it made me feel uncomfortable, and it made a lot of people feel uncomfortable. And the only person who stood up for us who felt uncomfortable was Patriot, um, or you know, Patriot's representative, <sighs> um, being Steve. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, it was the fact that they was just commenting. It, it, it made us feel uncomfortable because we weren't used to it at the time. Um, I'm not. I'm. I'm not ch- choosing sides. I'm not saying, hey, they was right, they was wrong, um, because they was both right and wrong. Um, both had valid points, um, and this is where you know I feel like they shouldn't hate as much on Patriot for going out of character. The fact that he went out of character is because he needed to explain the fact that, hey guys, you're kind of like interrupting in this feud. You're pretty much one-sided. I mean, some of them weren't the one-sided, but it was just like, just because he went out of character to address something, they bashed him straight away for it, and um, I kind of didn't like it. And one of the things that I, I always do on the page, I never got tried to never, ever go out of character. And I think that's one of the things that what I've got from Ray is that they like about my character is because I'm always in character. You know, if you're a fan on the page, I'm going to fucking give you shit as well. You know, I'm in character. (laughs) But, um, 
yeah, it was when they were saying about oh the whole obviously they couldn't comment on YouTube videos, um, and then they was interrupting into people's few uh, you know cause sometimes a feud is based on what we comment on that uh, Facebook page. And when a fan gets involved, it was like, why the fuck are you involved? You're not even part of the roster. This is confusing me. And, um, yeah, it was like, that's why I agree with Patriot. Because, um, they did get involved and it did feel pretty much one side. It was like, fuck what you say, we're supporting Ray. And it was like, hold on a minute. You know, what? why, why is it Ray's bangwagon? Why is every time... Ray's mentioned. You you could go on the page and it feels like you say Ray's a cunt and I hate the fucking redneck nation. Boom, they're straight away on you. Um, but if you say a nice thing about Ray, they're like, oh yeah, we like you and all that. Um, and it was just like, but where's the love for everyone? Where's the, you know, where's my fans? Where, why aren't my fans coming out? Why aren't my fans saying, hey, Skyrim's going to win the world title and, you know, fuck all the rest of your haters? You know, where are those fans? I want those fans to come out. Probably don't exist, but, you know. <laughs> you know, it's just like, it, it made us feel really overwhelmed. Um, I felt uncomfortable sometimes, but, you know, I was kept in character and I thought, fuck it, you know, I'm going to keep, you know, it's something that we had to adjust to. I've only just got adjusted to it, and it's 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 changed the landscape of the fan page. It's changed the landscape of COH because now we have a fan participation now. Um, you know, rather than um, voting polls, this is this is probably one of the things that you're going to like now. Rather than you know having the same people voting for um, matches or voting for best match of the year and when it comes to like the you know CRH Slammies and all that you know we'll probably have legitimate votes rather than uh, Sonny going around saying hey will you vote for me and I'll vote back for you and never does <clears throat> I'm not going to forget about that Sonny and I'll keep saying that until you die <laughs> and when I say you die I mean EW is going to kill you in a rematch map for the Pride title <laughs> If AJ doesn't do it before you. Yeah. So. That's, that's, that is going to be my new COH t-shirt. AJ is going to kill you. I, I will wear that support AJ against, you know, Leicester. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, now, I mean, we talked about all the stuff that, that your, your character has done and everything. And, and let's talk about here all that you, you have done for COH, I mean, for the last, what, last couple of years? I mean, it is until now where people are really starting to, to know that, like, all the um, the logos and and stuff and that you've made for COH. And you just do that, you know, not, just, just out of kindness, just to help Travis out. It's only recently that Travis has asked me, um, but before, I would just do it. I would just do it. I would just put it out there. I would, like, you know, the other week, uh, month, I pretty much did uh, five CPVs logos off the bat. Um, I think I did more, actually. Um, but it's only recently, like, Travis has, like, asked me to do stuff like um, these the tournaments, the tournament brackets. He asked me to do that, but apart from that, he has not asked me to do anything. Um, I just pretty much the only the only time he asks me for something is if I've already done it, and he's just asking for me to send it back to him again. But apart from that, and saying about that, I do actually have to send him World's Clyde logo. Sorry, Travis. I have I do remember. I just haven't got around to it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean. I just wish I knew about COH, you know, before it even started, because I would have been straight on the bandwagon. I think one of the reasons why I weren't straight away on there is because obviously I took my hiatus. Um, I wasn't involved. I didn't really want to be involved with YTCW anymore. Um, I knew Steve did his core show, um, 
but he was mainly focused on YTCW, I think. But it was no, no, because I no, I didn't even know Travis left YTCW. That's it. And I didn't really want to be involved with YTCW. Um, and then that's where I obviously I contacted Travis, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I left, and now I'm doing COH and all that." You know, I had a big fall now. And that's obviously what got me on board. Um, But yeah, um, I enjoy I enjoy I enjoy doing it. I like being part of COH. Um, I do want to expand to other places. I mean, hell, you never know. I might be doing stuff for um, YWF maybe. Mm. Even even though I don't think really they need me because they have actually they have started up up in the ball now and starting to do some awesome logos. Um, but you know, maybe your call fed might want me. Yeah, especially with, especially especially with PS4 now. Oh, oh my god, yeah, that's gonna make things so much easier. It's like so much we can share and upload, and it's gonna be incredible. I mean, people are gonna be asking me straight away off the bat, and I will do it. This this is me putting a plug out, and I will charge. You know, a title push. No, I'm joking. I know. I've <laughs> never asked for a title push. That's it. I, I've never, never once asked Travis for a title push. I've never asked him for any pushes, to be honest. Uh, hell, to be honest, I would, I, I would be happy just being backstage. You know, maybe I'd be a backstage interviewer one day. Um, but I've never asked for anything from back in for a turn, and that's where I think people have gone straight away saying. Oh, you've only got a title shot because you did this and you did that. I was like, it doesn't really matter if I did this and did that. I, I never asked for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, may, maybe I got it because I did do that. Maybe I got it because of what I've done uh, in COH um, character-wise. Um, that is down to Travis to answer, not me. Um, I could say to myself... Yeah, it is because of the stuff that I've done for COH. I mean, I've been around Core for many years, and I've uh, done stuff for YTCW. I've done stuff for SWA. I've done stuff for COH. Um, I did stuff for uh, Levi's Core Fed. I pretty much, you know, did the first few shows of his uh, editing wise. I did that. Uh, that's another thing. You know, I haven't mentioned that. You know, Steve. Um, and Travis, I think I might have helped Alex. Um, if it wasn't because of me, they would never had a call show. Because I think I was the one who banged on about um, capture cards, and I helped all, each of them with um, getting uh, editing software. If it wasn't because of me, um, I, I, the editing software I like to use. Um, Adobe Premiere Pro, and I set up them two with a copy of uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, and that's what got them started. And, uh, you know, n- not many people know that. I mean, some people do, some people don't. Um, I just, you know, I've just been seen as this guy who's slams people on steel steps, but, you know, when really get, you get to talk to me, you find out how. You've done quite a lot. Yes, you've done a lot of stuff that a lot of people um, either don't know or kind of know, and I'm just I'm just glad that now people are starting to see that because I've known for 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 a while now, but that's just because usually I I know this stuff. A lot of people don't, but now people do, mm. and it's cool because you do a lot of good work for with all this stuff. I, I do like the one thing Travis did for me, and uh, this is going way back. Um, the first ever outbreak, uh, that was a tribute show to VCW, the original VCW, not b- before I brought it back. And that was my encouragement to bring it back, because um, Travis was like, said, oh, uh, by the way, uh, Outbreak is like the tribute show to your... Because I think this was just before Outbreak 2 uh, came around, mm-hmm. and... Um, 
Yeah, that, that is one of the things that I really pissed me off at. Um, Outbreak 3 was part of um, Battleground and not Slam because I I was going to so take advantage of the fact that that was a tribute show to VCW and uh, I wanted to be like, this is my show. And, uh, you know, be like The Rock and all that, you know, welcome to my show kind of thing. And, you know, but I never got to do it. I was like, oh, it's one of the going things. But, you know, some things happen and some greater things happen in other areas. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now, let's get to name association. Oh, this is going to be fun. Oh, I, I wanna, I'm just waiting for the first name because I know who you're going to say. I know who you're going to say. You know who I'm going to oh. say? Yep. Uh, Daniel Mars. Oh, right, okay. Scott. 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 Daniel Mars. Daniel um, Mars. If it wasn't because of him, I don't think I would have had a great feud in COH. Um, I want to go where I am now. Um n- I can't say anything bad about him. I would love to say something bad about him. <laughs> <laughs> but this is going to be one of those word associations. I'm starting it now. I'm, I'm dropping the, you know, I don't think all the names you're going to give me, I'm going to say anything bad about someone. Um, but yeah, I think you might, might come on. But yeah, there's nothing really I want to say bad about him. Um, just a side a side note. Uh, would would there would you be open to the idea? Because I know he he always wants it of you guys feuding again, or you think that chapter that is done? Rock and Austin. Rock and Austin. Rock and Austin. Aunt McGlory. Daniel Mars versus Scott Adams. World title on the line. If it if it doesn't ha- if that isn't a match, then you know. Fuck it, we'll do it without the title. <laughs> but but I could be a match. I mean, we both spoke about it and, you know, we, we do... I, I agree with him. He, he was the one who said, you know, our feud is a bit like Rock and Austin, you know, fucking, we could take it to the next level and, you know, bring it out to the, you know, put, put the world title on the line, you know. Hell, he could even be the world champion on the other show. I mean, it doesn't matter who's champion, but, I mean... That would be one of the one of my dream matches, even if I dropped the belt to him, you know. Because at the end of the day, I mean, it's like a full circle, you know. He's had, you know, that I've had the Austin kind of feud with him, you know. I've had wins after wins after wins, and you know, it could come to like the like, you know, the last WrestleMania moment with Brock and Austin where the Rock actually wins. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how I kind of see. Um, we both see picture us two as that kind of final chapter. I don't want to end the feud with him, to be honest. I think you know, hell, I won't. I, I won't. I won't even mind tagging up with him now because the whole with him with it being with them accuracy, it's kind of like welcome to the dark side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Speaking of that, M accuracy, Steve. I hate the guy. I think he's a prick. <laughs> no, 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 I love him. No, Steve's an awesome guy. I mean, I've, I've, I've known him for years. I, I, the only reason why I said that is because everybody said he's an awesome guy. I mean, what can you say bad about Steve apart from Patriot's um, association with him? <laughs> Um, true, true. You know, he's. I think the only disappointing thing from Steve is the fact that David fucked him about, and um, it made him lose interest in um, carrying on SWA, and that really upset me because that was one of the that was my second show. What I was more interested, in apart from COH, and. Um, It just, it, you know, I had a character there. I was like Scott Adams, the pimp daddy, and then I, it becomes Scott Phoenix, and it was like end of show. I was like, fuck. <laughs> All right, um, Jay. 
I'm still waiting for him to deliver me a bell. <laughs> No, he's he he's the guy. You know, he's pretty much fucking eBay of belts. You know? <laughs> if you want to, if you want to get a belt, and you know, you you don't know what sort of belt you should buy, you should call Jay up on O seven. Give me a fucking belt right now. <laughs> <sighs> oh my! I, I, I love Jay. He makes me laugh. All right. Um. Fisk. He has his own brand now. Do you know that? He does, yeah. He's doing very well, making a lot of money. Yeah. I want him to give me some money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy, remember those tag team matches? <laughs> oh. um. Hi, he's a cool guy. I like his core fed. Um, at first, it was like, nah, this is a core fed. Everybody uses a core fed. Yeah. But now it's like, this is a core fed to watch. Mm-hmm. I really should watch it. He's made some strides with the show. Uh, who else is there? Nate. Recently retired Nate. Why retire? I still need to listen to his podcast, by the way. Oh, that has a good one. It's it's long, but it's I, I I've I've got a fear that I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna listen to it, and I'm gonna go, oh, that's the reason. <laughs> Fuck. But no, he shouldn't retire. I, I I really would love to have a match with Nate. I, he's you know he's a bad guy. Who wouldn't want to have a get match with Nate? I mean, I want to know who that list is. Post that in the description below. Who who do you? Who doesn't want to have a feud with Nate? Well, I want to know. <laughs> and then I want to have a feud with you. <laughs> oh, man. Um, EW. EW, right. Me and EW, we go way back. Um, we go way back to, like, 2008. Um, we used to play um, Grand Theft Auto, um... There's a multiplayer mod for uh, San Andreas on the PC, and we used to play like shitloads. And then he stopped playing all of a sudden. Um, but yeah, good friend of mine. Um, I need to talk to him more. That's one of the things I regret. I don't talk to him as much. Um, but yeah, I, I got him into core because he was really wanting to get into core. He, he he first watched VCW and he was like, I really want to get into it. It's like. And it was just coming up to the end of like when I stopped doing VCW, and uh, that's when he, he was like, I introduced him to VOH, and he was like, yeah, I want to join. And that's what happened. I told him to talk to Travis, and boom, there you go. All right. Next, the, next name, Travis. Uh, Travis, <laughs> <laughs> you was going to say that, weren't you? Yes. <laughs> Um, Travis is one guy who I love the most, um, you know, COH, you know, I'm glad that he's doing it, um, I'm glad that YCCW and him had a falling out, because I don't think he would have done what he's doing now, and, hell, 2K16 is going to be the future of COH, and it's going to make it look awesome. Awesome stuff. Um, Nitro. Nitro. Underrated. He is one guy who, you know, he he would do anything for anyone. And, uh, you know, I love the guy. You know, he's a British criminal. A.K.A. Australian. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, you got, you got your love the Aussies and... Uh, you know, he's one guy who I've spoke to a few times on Skype. Um, I mean, he did my um, my COH uh, Titatron intro, and you know, uh, who was supposed to do it first? Um, I can't remember who did the first one. Shit, no. Who was right? Now that's another person. But whoever did my first Titatron, put it in the comment section because I forgot who you are. Was it Kevin? <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's it, Kevin. No, no. All right, Kevin, don't need to now. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but yeah, Kevin tried to do it and he couldn't do it uh, right, and uh, Nitro did it and he got it right, and yeah, I thank Nitro for that. Even though I did love Kevin's, Kevin's was awesome too. Kevin is the next name in there. PC. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> right, Kevin. Um, I wouldn't have VCW without him and Morris. Not Morris's next name. I wouldn't have Morris without it. <laughs> VCW without Morris and Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> this is gonna. Do, is this word association? Me just t- shouting out names, and then you just going, "That's the next person." <laughs> <laughs> it's just ended up working now. <laughs> Uh, uh, who's next on the list? How many people have you got on this list? I got one more name. One more name? Yes. One big name. The Alex Enterprise. I knew it. Um, I miss him. I want him back in COH. Um, the, sh- the ideas he has the ideas that come out of his head and I'm still waiting for um, Wrestle Blaster Go-Go to happen because shit you asked me to make that logo for you fucking god knows how long ago <laughs> and I'm still waiting for that show you said it was going to be at, you said I'll make the logo and you said it was going to be happening that year um, well yeah I think I made it in like was it 2014 I made the logo and he said the show was going to be out in 2000 and no no it was 2013 I made the logo and he was going to make the show 2014 and you know we're now in 2015 I'm still waiting for the fucking show oh I'm still waiting for the you know he made he made a group page uh, sorry not group group chat on Facebook saying that he's going to bring back and anybody want to join and I'm like I'm still waiting <laughs> Hopefully one day. I'm surp- There's one name I'm surprised you haven't brought up. I missed the name. Yeah. I was expecting you to get a reaction out of me for it. I got some names. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> he knows. Right. He knows who I'm I have. Say. I have a couple actually. Right. Okay. I have a couple actually. Um, <clears throat> first one I'm gonna actually say is uh David Perry. If it wasn't because of him, I wouldn't be in call. Um, but um, you know, there's there's, ba- there's bad blood between us. Um, I don't really want to say anything bad about him because at the end of the day, um, you know, people, right. can, people can repatch things, but I don't want to ever be back with YTCW. Uh, hmm. Did you say Sonny? No, we didn't say Sonny. Um, oh, no, I didn't say Sonny, Sonny um, needs to stop saying racist things during um, <laughs> like, conversations. Yeah, especially when they're being recorded. <laughs> Speaking of, here's Travis. We, yeah, we had Travis. I know, I'm talking about that's what he said. Speaking of niggers, hey, Travis. Um, let's see. Uh, all right, Levi. Levi, uh... You need a new name for your eBay unboxing because no one gives a shit about eBay. And I've said that to his face. So that, that's not a shoot there. Before anybody... Co- I know where your fans go. They go, oh my god, he just said a shoot on Levi. Oh my god, the hey, I thought they was friends. <laughs> uh, hmm. did, did you say... Uh, did you say Ray Geddes? Ray Geddes. One motherfucker who needs to stop ripping off Stone Cold. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Did, did you even like my promo? What I did on him? That that was an actually Austin 316 promo, but I reworded it. To yeah. <laughs> I I reworded it so like um what was it um um rather than it Austin 316 said I just uh, kicked your ass out. Um, mine was uh, this British bastard that said eh, 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 good enough anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that was meant to be the cue line, but um. You, you, you. What was it? The um, the whole intro before that—that that was actually wordplay on the whole promo. Um, but yeah, I love Ray. Uh, we get on very well. We talk all the time. We t- talk about feuds. We talk about people we do and don't like in COH. 
to be honest, he likes everybody in COH, so when I say do and don't, he, he never says anything bad about anybody. That's, uh, Brian Carroll. Ah, <sighs> uh, shit. Next question. <laughs> okay, Garnett Court. <laughs> I, that was my, that was the name I was expecting some, you to say first. I was expecting you to say Garnet Court first. Um, all I can remember of Garnet Court is having that Skype conversation. I don't know who, I can't remember who was there, but he was getting, um, a, it's because of the shit he used to give people and, and then he expected respect off everyone. And, uh, he was hating me saying words like retard and I, I think I did call him a nigger and, um, Oh, I did. I was a bit I think I did. Um, I'm not proud of it. I'm not racist, but um, he, he was no. He was commenting on things that he didn't like people saying, and I would um, bring it up and uh, yeah, I, I would. I, I constantly called him a nigger. I was just like nigger, 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 nigger to him, and he was getting offended by it. And I says, "You're offended now." I says. And he says, yeah, I am offended. I says, well, the shit you do and say about other people, like calling Alex, um, like, um, exit prick just because um, Peter Gilmore says it, um, you know, that offends us. Why do it? You know, if you don't like us saying things affect what offend you, why should you offend us? And, uh, yeah, that's what I did. Um and the fact that he uh, made that fucking some some troll uh, brought up my ex and all that and did a picture um, and he thought it was funny that pissed me off and he did apologise for it and I'm not accepted his apology nah he, th- there is lines you draw and that was one of them um, but yeah that's Christian Gary for you Garnet or whatever you want to call him piece of trash uh, that pretty much does all my names. So. Yeah, I, I feel, before we finish it off, we need to lighten the mood. So, here's a question that was sent in by Jay. Um, how big is your dick? Big enough for it to fit in your mouth. And, you know, <laughs> I, I, I live in the UK, so you see how far it travels. Whoa. Oh, man, that's fun. All right, well, a great interview with the champ. As as he does things that are, yeah, okay. Um, so, oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, my mic is open. He was drinking soda. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Fizzy bubbly. Fist, fist uh, iced tea. Um... Fist iced tea. That would have been fist iced tea. <laughs> so, thank you, Scott, for coming on. It's welcome. You're welcome. I, I was going to say, damn it, Cash, we're going to have to start the fucking old video again. <laughs> <laughs> got to start this whole podcast over. Okay, back to the beginning. So we first joined COH. <laughs> oh. Oh. What a, what a great way to end it. Well... Thank you, everyone, for watching. And, Scott, I wish you the best of luck. And I know you're going to pr- prove all the uh, the doubters wrong with who, who think that you don't deserve to be the champion. Thank you. And uh, you're going to have to have me on again, this time with questions. We'll just do questions. Just we'll do, do a questions whole, is round we'll off questions. Ho- we'll, do a, we'll do a half an hour of Q&A. <laughs> oh, my a God. It's really fun. Just, just, just flood, literally, flood. AJ's Ask FM account because Sean never reads his Ask FM account. No, fuck it. Flood Cash is <laughs> Cash loves it. Flood his account with loads and loads of questions. Oh my god! Legitimate questions though, and Sean will have me on in the future, and I'll answer them all. Oh. Literally every, literally every single one of them. How I'll even ask the the. Uh, the troll questions. Fuck it. We'll have to do it again. Alright, yeah, I like that. We'll definitely have to. Alright, well, thank you for coming again. Best of luck.